Like many men of a certain age, I am becoming concerned with my place in the world and what to do about excess ear hair. It was towards the end of my first Turkish haircut that I became aware it might hold the answer to both these questions. As I passed the barber shop, impulsively feeling in the need of a little Turkish trim, I stuck my head in the doorway and a teenager motioned me to sit down. I was surprised to find out that he was the barber and the seven-year-old with him was his assistant. Well, everything was going according to plan. Even with the language difficulty, when called upon, I would make the appropriate motion for short or the buzzing sound of the razor clippers. I thought we're close to being done. When suddenly the haircut took off, like the first drop of a roller coaster, arms flailing, yelping, stomach flying, what flung me in this odd position was the ball of flame in my ear. I'd seen it out at the corner of my eye. The junior pyromaniac had a ball of cotton on a stick, a giant Q-tip. He dipped into a liquid, and with a flick of a lighter, it burst into flame. It dawned on me that this might be part of the Turkish haircut ritual. A big change from the hunt and fish and sports talk that defines the American male cliff bonding experience. As he plunged in the tiki torch, I smelled the stink of burning hair, my hair. Next, the barber took two thin strings and began to floss my face, eliminating any fuzz from my cheeks. Then he filled his hands with a lemon scented oil and clamped down on my nose. As I gasped for breath and started to hyperventilate, I thought this might be a perfect technique for the panting dervish, a similar but lesser known sect to Rumi's whirling dervish who go into a trance to get closer to God, not by spinning, but by heavy breathing. Then I had an image of Rumi. I'd always wondered why he started to spin. Now I think I know the missing part of the story. He was having a haircut. His ears were on fire. If he didn't do something drastic, he'd fry to a crisp. So around in circles, the master went until the flame was out. When your ears are being flambéed, you are closer to God. You see things. You know what Ruby means when he says, the light you give up does not come from a pelvis. No, it comes from an ear kebab. As I panted and jerked, providing great entertainment for the gang in the barbershop, the tonsorial teen pushed my head down into the sink soaking me with ice-cold water. Then he pulled my head up and nuzzled me. I can't remember the last time a barber nuzzled me. Yanking my head back and forth, he attempted to pop the bones of my neck. And when that didn't work, he switched to karate chops, ending with a very traditional blow-dry and the spraying of manly echidna-flavored cologne. As my time in the mystic barber chair came to an end, I now know the most effective technique for the removal of unwanted hair follicles. Use fire! As for my place in the world, I keep thinking of those large chunks of turning skewered meat you see all over Turkey.